Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is the first in the Angular Fundamental series. In this video, we begin to build an Angular single page application project. AngularJS is a popular client side user interface JavaScript library. In any software application, the structure of the project can either boost developer productivity or hinder it. There is no one-size-fits-all project structure for Angular applications. We will create a starter project that is structured for repeatability, yet flexible for changing requirements. This video assumes that a few prerequisite tools are installed on a host machine. Those tools are Node.js, the Node Package Manager, or NPM, and the Gulp command line interface. If you are unsure if these tools are installed on your computer, open a terminal and run the following commands to check. node-v, npm-v, and gulp-v. Each of these commands simply attempts to check the version of the installed tool. If a version number is written to the console, the tool is installed, otherwise it is not. If Node.js or the Node Package Manager are not installed, go to nodejs.org for installation documentation. If Gulp is not installed, go to gulpjs.com for installation documentation. Let's get started. Begin by creating the project root directory. For this video series, the project is named Angular-Demo. Within that directory, I'll create the two top-level directories named src for source and lib. The src directory will contain the application and unit test source code. The lib directory will contain third-party JavaScript and CSS libraries upon which our application depends. Now navigate into the source directory. Within src, create directories named main and test. The main directory contains application source files, and the test directory contains unit tests. Now, navigate into the main directory. Create a directory named app. Navigate into the app directory. Create directories named Coffee, CSS, and Partials. In this video series, CoffeeScript is used to create Angular modules. However, you may easily use JavaScript instead. The syntax is very similar and easily understood by JavaScript developers. Simply replace the Coffee directory with one named JS if you wish to use JavaScript. Now, let's navigate back to the test directory. Within test, create directories named app and lib. Navigate into the app directory and make a directory named coffee. The test app coffee directory contains unit test code. The test lib directory contains third party libraries which are only required for unit tests. Let's add the third party libraries to the project's lib directory. Download the latest AngularJS release from angularjs.org and the latest jQuery release from jQuery.com. Place the minified files, place the minified JavaScript files into the lib directory. That's all we need for now. In later videos in this series, we will require additional dependencies as we expand the functionality of the application. Just as server-side applications use Maven or Gradle to perform development workflow tasks like compiling and packaging, executing unit tests, or running an application locally, we will use Node.js, the Node Package Manager, and Gulp to do the same thing with this Angular application. This requires several control files to configure these tools. 
First, let's create the package.json file. This file lists the third-party dependencies upon which our application relies to assemble and test it. I'm going to open my text editor and open the project in the file system browser. In the project base directory, create a file named package.json and include the following. This JSON structure tells the Node Package Manager which libraries to download and install within our project structure. Note that most of the dependencies are for Gulp and Karma. As you will soon see, Gulp is a tool which automates common project activities like unit testing and deploying the project to a local web server. Karma will be discussed in a later video in this series. Karma provides an environment in which unit tests are executed. Now open a terminal prompt and navigate to the project base directory. Type npm install to instruct the node package manager to read the package.json file and install these dependencies. You will see a, lo a lot of console logging as npm downloads the dependencies. When it completes, list the directory contents. A new directory named node underscore modules has been created. This is where the Node Package Manager installs the dependencies listed in the package.json file. The gulp control file may be written in JavaScript or CoffeeScript. The file declares dependencies on the libraries that it needs to do its job and defines individual tasks. Examples include cleaning the project distribution directory, linting, concatenating, and minifying the JavaScript, or moving application assets to the distribution directory. Other gulp tasks organize multiple tasks into a sequence to produce a larger result. For example, a task named run might clean the distribution directory, copy CSS and other static assets to the distribution directory, and prepare the JavaScript or CoffeeScript, starting a local web server for developer testing. I'm going to copy and paste the gulp file into this project. The gulp tasks will be discussed in greater depth in a later video in this series. Create a new file named gulpfile.coffee in the base project directory and paste in the contents of the gulp file. There's a lot of code in that file. Don't worry if you feel like it's moving too fast in this video. The goal of this video is to teach you how to structure the Angular project and the minimum files required. The complete source for the Angular skeleton project is available on GitHub. The repository URL is in the description for this video. The coffee lint file is a set of rules used to validate the CoffeeScript source file syntax and structure. For Java developers, this is analogous to a check style or PMD rule set. The official unaltered coffee lint rules may be obtained from coffeelint.org. Let's create a new file named coffeelint.json in the project base directory, and I'm going to paste in the contents from coffeelint.org. Next, let's create the index.html file. The index page is the only full HTML page in this application. Later in this video series, we will show you how to use HTML partials to add content to the index page. Go to the source main app directory and create the index.html file. I'm going to paste in the contents. This is a fairly standard HTML5 document. We've included some meta tags to prepare for the inclusion of boot, the Bootstrap CSS framework later. At the end of the head and body sections, the app.css and app.javascript files are included. We will create those in the next video in this series. 
The body of the index page contains markup for three major sections, a header, a footer, and the main content area. We've made significant progress on our project. Let's start the application and see our work in action. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type gulp space run to start the local web server on port 9000. Now, open a new browser tab and enter localhost colon 9000 slash index.html in the address bar and press enter. Notice the static header and footer content are displayed on the page. The main content section is currently empty. Congratulations! You have created a reusable project structure that uses Gulp to assemble your application and run it in a locally hosted web server for developer testing. In part two of the Angular Project Bootstrap, we will create the Angular application and a controller which creates dynamic content in the main section of the page. To view the full source of this project's GitHub repository, see this video's description. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com.